Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we were looking at creating custom comparators for standard set, multi-set, map, and multi-map, the associative containers in the C++ standard library. And last episode, we looked at what it would take to use a lambda for a comparator instead of a custom-defined class. We're going to go back to that custom-defined class, as you can see here, to make uh, an example of using a transparent comparison. And I'll show what that means. So as it stands, we've got our my set that's got our data of Bob. But we know that the key is the thing that we care about. That's why we created our custom comparator. So you might want to go back to episodes and watch that if you haven't already. So we've got our key, and we just want to know, does our key exist in this set? And we're going to do that by checking to see if the count is greater than zero for a thing. So we can maybe try to do this. Well, we want to count the number of bobs in here. And is that greater than zero? I don't know. There's no matching function call to standard count of const car for. You're like, oh, that's right. This should be a string instead. And we still get a com uh, compiler error because really this count method on standard set wants an object of type my data. So we're in this world where we're like creating a temporary thing because we just want to know something about a key that's in there. And you know, this finally compiled. So C14 added this notion of a transparent comparator. And this is actually pretty darn cool. So we've got our custom comparator that we've already added here. And we're like, well, you know what? I think I should be able to compare against a string because a string is the thing that I want to compare against. So we can actually add another overload. And we need to go back to passing in our character literal here, uh, we're still getting this compiler error, uh, I believe, for two reasons. The first is that we have to tell the standard library that we want to provide these transparent comparisons. Otherwise, it doesn't uh, enable the templated version of the count member function. So we need to do this. It can be anything right here. It just needs something to say that it's got this transparent comparison. Let's swap the order of these parameters. And so what we've got is the compiler saying, you know what, you need to provide both of these comparisons for me. So we've got the left-hand side version and the right-hand side version because there's no built-in conversion from a string to my data. And we're okay with that right now because we don't want to be creating a bunch of extra temporary objects that we don't need. So now we have something that's compiling again. But we have a little problem in that this makes it easy to hide implicit conversions that we're not thinking of. So we're passing in this const character literal. And for each comparison that it has to do to decide where we should live in the set or whatever, it's having to do these comparisons where it's creating temporary strings all over the place. So we've got all kinds of code that's been compiled here. And I cannot make any promise as to how much less code we'll have in a moment, but hopefully some less. So we're at currently 514 instructions. But to make this more efficient, we're going to create templated versions of these comparisons. Now, if you're not familiar with templates, this it's just a placeholder name. So we're saying anything of type T is being passed in here. And it accepted that. And we're going to do the same thing down here. So we are guaranteed that one of these is of type my data, and the other one is of type anything. 
anything that happens to be less than comparable. So it's able to pass in the const character literal into our operator paren method here, member function here, and then we're able to do this comparison, and with any luck, the compiler actually generated less code for us. Yeah, a few instructions less. But at runtime, we are definitely saving a lot of implicit conversions from const character literals to strings. So there you go. This is a, a bit more of an introduction to these transparent comparators that were added in C14 that I meant to give, but I still think it's pretty interesting, and I hope that you got something from this episode. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.